Well, would you look at that? One of the worst articles ever written by mankind by Luke Plunkett. Big shock. I'm Kotaku. Smash! Oh no, Earthworm Jim. Oh no, Luke. Let's talk about this article that you just wrote about Earthworm Jim and how atrocious this truly is. Before we get going into this story, I need to, full disclosure, let you guys know that there was an interaction on Twitter earlier today where I basically just called out Luke Plunkett for writing a atrocious article. Now, that is my opinion, which I last time I checked, we're allowed to have. And Luke is clearly allowed to have his opinions as well. But he doesn't want to have a conversation. He just wants to say things and and not care about the fallout from them. Which is interesting, being a writer, you would think that the interaction would be there, that you'd want the conversation to happen. But clearly, Luke is an SJW. Like, doing some history, some research on this guy, he stands for a lot of strange principles, in my opinion. And anybody that disagrees with him, I mean, it, it gets really, really weird. Luke shared his Kotaku article on Twitter, and he said, I've seen, he used the wrong tense of I've, he didn't use the apostrophe, he didn't capitalize, whatever, it's Twitter, but he's a writer, that's kind of weird anyways. I've seen better trailers from student portfolio showcases. Okay, this is in reference to the Earthworm Jim, while he's calling a trailer, I would not even say it's a trailer, it's a teaser. It's like literally it's 30 seconds of Earthworm Jim just walking on the intro screen for a game that's a year and a half out. To which I replied, I've seen better written articles from diarrhea smeared over paper. Which was kind of just in jest about how aggressive he was being about Earthworm Jim on the Amico. I was just equaling what he said about his article because that's how he feels about this Earthworm Jim trailer as he puts it. That's how I feel about his article. And what does he do as soon, like literally seconds after sending that? Blocks me. Blocks me. Oh, Luke. Luke, 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 Luke. Where, where do we start here? Okay. So, again, you are entitled to your opinion. You're more than welcome to share it on the internet. But don't think that people aren't going to take you to task on it. Don't think that people won't have issues with your stances against things that are a year and a half away, that barely show off any concrete evidence of what the game is going to be, and you write this 30 paragraph essay about why Earthworm Jim is going to suck. What the hell, man? He starts it off saying he's had fond memories of Earthworm Jim growing up and how the first two games were incredible. And then also the cartoon was good, but whatever. That's ancient history because Earthworm Jim in 2020 ain't what it used to be. A 30 second, like literally, it's less than 30 second teaser trailer of just the walking animation. And this dude is pissed about it. That's it. That's the, as he says, the trailer. And what's the Intellivision Amico you probably asked before even hitting play on the trailer? Uh, like, he's taking shots at this console that is brand new to the market, that hasn't even put money into the marketing budget yet. It's just literally Tommy Tellerico going around to YouTubers telling them about what it is and getting the information out there. And this guy is already pissing on it before it goes anywhere. Like, I just... This is such a pat the NES punk approach where you're you're crapping on the system and I did it too. I did it too, but I came full circle after talking to Tommy and finding out about what this thing was in real life and spending the time with it, holding it in my hands, playing the games and experiencing the passion behind this project that Tommy and the team have it in television. I was like, okay, you know what? That completely changed my mind. It revolutionized my thought process. And now I am completely on board with this Amico project. I am team Amico all the way. And I hope that it's successful because this is a passion project from someone who truly cares about gaming. Despite the fact that it was supposed to be released in October before it was pushed back to April 2021. Like, this guy's trashing the Amico, but whatever. Let's, let's see what else he has to say here. The game was supposed to be out in October as well. Eh, 
wrong, Luke. Actually, the game was never planned for launch. This is something if you actually kept up and paid attention to Tommy and the team and actually did, I don't know, one iota of research before writing a slander article, you would have learned that, oh, it actually was never supposed to come out even in the launch window. This was always a 2021 project. And then Tommy actually called him out on Twitter, to which he updates in his article afterwards. Okay, I'm wrong about that one. It was always due after the console's release. I was wrong about that one. Okay, let's, let's keep going, Luke. What else you got? A huge part of Earthworm Jim's original appeal was its badass 16-bit pixel art. The contrast here between a hand-drawn Jim and a mirror-smooth background is the opposite of that and looks, in my objective and scientific opinion, very bad. I don't know how somebody could watch this less than 30 second teaser of the opening intro screen watching Earthworm Jim walk on the beach and trash it that much. It looks fine. It looks exciting and interesting. It looks like a game I'd want to play. If it's not your cup of tea, that's fine. But saying that the original appeal of the 16-bit pixel art is a huge contrast between the hand-drawn Jim and Mirror Smooth backgrounds that's not even what's happening here. To which Tommy pointed out on Twitter once again, Luke, two things you got wrong in the article. The original Earthworm Jim games were all hand-drawn animation, like we did with Aladdin. And also you said it was supposed to come out in October. It's always slave for winter 2021. Wondering if you'll fix those mistakes. So Luke is hanging on to the fact that he never technically said that this was all hand-drawn and the other ones weren't, but he implied it here, which is the frustration that Tommy had when he's basically slamming the game, saying things misleading the viewer or the reader, in this case, that the game is different than the original Earthworm Jim games, and because of that, it's bad. But this part is where the article, it, it just completely takes a nosedive like it was already bad but then when Luke goes into things that have literally nothing to do with the game and saying this is why the game is bad and you shouldn't give it your money is really something that people need to hold him accountable for but also 2020 is a good time 2020 is a good time for this. All right, here comes the SJW. It's a good time as Eddie to point out the character's creator, Doug Tenepal, if that's how you say his last name, is an enormous piece of shit. As recently as Chuck's calendar, last week, he engaged with some heinously racist trash on a podcast series saying stuff like the black culture and black communities are not doing well. They too are still the fallout victim of their own ignorance and maybe their own willful ignorance or fatherlessness or whatever. So it's not all Whitey's problem. Okay, so this is something I don't, I'm not taking a stance on whether I agree or disagree with Doug here, but I do always take the stance of people are welcome to say what they want to say and have a conversation about it. That's how people learn and further society into hopefully a better place. Whereas this dude, Luke Plunkett, doesn't want a conversation. He just wants to shut down anyone with opposing views that he has and tries to drag the most random stuff from somebody else or a creator of the game or a former creator. He's not even the creator of the new Earthworm Jim game. Trying to drag him into the situation to say, this is why the new Earthworm Jim game is bad. That has nothing to do with Earthworm Jim. And yet the article continues to talk about Doug Nepal and talks about how he's a horrible piece of shit human being and that's why all of this looks like trash. What a terrible take. Like, this is awful. Should be embarrassed. People should be calling him out for this like I did and letting him know that it's not okay to trash a game that has multiple creators with different viewpoints, with different stances on reality and taking one of those people that has very little to do with the project and say, this is why people shouldn't be giving its money. And you go into the comments section and you got people comparing this guy to a Nazi and saying how he's that bad. I'm like, this, this is what... This is what 2020s become. This is this is as a society what what we're what we're fighting about right now. Like Earthworm Jim, it looks good. It looks interesting. The Amico, if you do a little research on it, looks fun. Looks interesting. 
If you don't like it, that's fine. You don't have to buy it, like I've said multiple times. But but shitting on it for the sake of getting clicks, that's low. That's that's really low. And I should know, because I've made videos shitting on stuff just to get attention and clicks too. But at least I can admit to it, where Luke Plunkett will do this and then block people that call him out for it. Like, this is garbage. This is absolute garbage. It's a heinous act by a writer on a platform like Kotaku who is known for SJWBS. And apparently they revel in being that site. Like, it's just such a strange, strange thing. Like, you don't have to like the game. You don't even have to like the creator. But making an uninformed article to shit on it, as you say here, because you don't like the original creator's viewpoints on certain things in the past, or even if he has a different perspective than you on things, doesn't make the game bad. Like, this is, this goes into a whole different conversation of do you support the art of a creator if you don't like what the creator stands for in real life, which is, to me, it's totally different because this article starts off shitting on what the game looks like and how he doesn't like what it looks like, but then he tries to curb into what he doesn't like about Doug and, and why he's a horrible human being and why that makes the game even worse. And it's just, it's a very poorly written article. It's a bad take. And the fact that Luke Plunkett blocked me immediately on Twitter for literally doing the same thing that he did to Tommy and the team shows you exactly the type of person that he is. It's pathetic.